Okay. Hi, everybody. I uh, hope you're doing well. I wanted to write a programming language, and uh, I thought it would be fun to make some videos about it. So, uh, so I've created some toy languages before, uh, so a Lisp and uh, a C-like -like language. But what I haven't done before is make a self-hosted compiler. So I thought that would be a, a nice goal to have. Uh, a self-hosted compiler is a compiler which could compile its own source code or source code into itself. One thing that's important is uh, that I'm very lazy. <laughs> so uh, it's important to pick a programming language type, which is easy to compile. I was thinking either a Lisp or a stack-oriented programming language. As I've already written a Lisp interpreter before, I thought it would be fun to go for stack-oriented. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll explain why it is easy to compile later on in the video. Um, so what's stack-oriented? Uh, it's quite easy. It means that uh, you're working with a stack. So if you write two, then the stack, uh, a, a two is uh, pushed onto the stack. Then you write three, three is executed and uh, three is pushed onto the stack. And if you write a plus, then, then uh, the top two elements of the stack are uh, popped and, uh, and they're added and the result is pushed back onto the stack. So right now the stack has one element which is five. So that's like the short explanation of a stack-oriented uh, programming language. That notation that you saw, so like two, three plus, and that's called reverse Polish notation. Um, now, while I wanted to do this for a long time, so write a self-hosted compiler, um, I was inspired to do this by a channel which I found last week. Uh, let's see. Um, so his channel is called Soding. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah, this. So uh, he's got a whole playlist. I'll uh, put a link in the description. But uh, he wrote a, 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 a language called Porth, and uh, he wrote first uh, wrote a Bootstrap uh, compiler in Python, and then he wrote uh, yeah a self-hosted compiler. And I saw that, and I thought, yeah, I wanted to do that too. Although there um, will be uh, some fundamental differences with Porth, so it will be far from a a poor clone. Um, I want to uh, learn as much as possible from this, so uh, uh, yeah, I will uh, try to uh, figure out a solution for every problem uh, uh, without like stealing too much from uh, other languages. Um, so, for example, I think I will have different uh, function calling conventions um, and I I want to have uh, a dynamic memory allocator which is a bit different than what uh, his uh, language Porth uh, does so for example I don't I don't think he has a way to free memory um, and I just want to make a like a malloc and a free function so yeah, that will be a bit different. But uh, well, the first thing we need to do is generate a name. Um, I was thinking about, because I really have no idea how to call this. Um, so what if I take the bash manual and yeah, every space, okay. I want to take every word, so I have to grab on anything that will give me words. All right. Um, so I guess to how many words are there? Fifty thousand. Okay. So 
uh, yeah, if we take uh, like the latest uh, number of them all. <laughs> okay, no, that's not gonna work. Maybe something way more random. A <laughs> a um okay a a pro a programming language. It might might be a bit um confusing this name, but I guess uh, I'll. I'll uh, Increase this. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Let's just go with it. I might change it later. So, a programming language. Let's define what that means. Okay. Um, so, we want it to be stack oriented like fourth. Um, okay, so one thing I want to do is um, I really like the, the way Python uh, syntax is uh, white space specific. So because I don't like it when I need to like uh, have keywords for the beginning and ending of, uh, of a code block. <coughs> So yeah, white space specific Python. I would love to, uh, yeah, do that. And what I really like about uh, Zoding's uh, language Porth is uh, it's statically typed and it it has type checking in compile time. So that's yeah something that I want. So type checking like uh, Zoding. Okay, I guess that's it for now. Um, so this project has one clear goal. Go to write a self-hosted compiler. All right, so maybe some example code. Um, let's see, um, we want to be able to like include or import, uh, libraries to keep it clean, to keep projects clean. I think, um, comments like uh, this, like uh, bash or uh, Python, um, and we can Maybe we, we want to have a, a function called add. And um, so what I was thinking, um, I think I want to have like names for parameters, which is not something that fourth uh, does this way. So for example, int x and int y, and because we want to specify what it returns, it will return an int. So, and then x, y plus, and then the top uh, value on the stack is returned. So I think something like this, and then you would like, uh, uh, you could add two and one. So right now three is on the stack. F4 and uh, compare three and four. Three is uh, less than four, so this would be true. And then an if statement would look like this. Um, I guess something like this. Um, put string and else statements uh, like this. Yeah. So um, I also want to add like uh, some way to name variables. So we might make 
Well, yeah, we'll talk about it later. I think this is a good way to start. So for today, um, yeah, let's write uh, the, the bootstrap compiler, uh, user bin and Python 3. Um, okay, so normally in compiler consists of a lexer, a parser, and uh, something like a code generator. Um, I mean, you can specify the blocks uh, in a different way, but normally like the lexer um, takes the program, the source code, and uh, put, uh, tokenizes it. So uh, cuts it in different tokens. Um, the parser then takes these tokens and um, like shuffles them around into an, an, a, a structure. Um, uh, it, that's called a, a AST, uh, something uh, syntax tree. So, um, and this syntax tree is then, uh, it's, it's really easy to convert that to code. Um, but before you convert it into machine code, it's, it's uh, quite usual to, uh, um, to convert it into uh, IR, like uh, intermediate representation. And we're also going to do this um, because I was thinking about using LLVM um, as a backend, but actually it turns out I looked into it and it turns out LLVM is uh, really not suited for uh, stack oriented programming languages. So it's way easier to uh, compile it into um, assembly, basically. So, um, which is also the way I've done it for earlier uh, program toy programming languages. Um, so I'm kind of uh, accustomed uh, to it. But uh, yeah, this time it's really the, the best way to go with uh, compiling to uh, assembly. Okay, uh, we will, however, uh, like compile it to IR first, um, which will make it easier to, um, to uh, like extend the compiler to different targets because we're now gonna write it for uh, x86, uh, 64 only but we might want to have different targets, maybe different operating systems or architectures. So yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay, so I guess we first want to like define, uh, okay, the program that we're gonna run is this. It's gonna be simple, a good starting point. So um, let's, Define the tokens, the token types. So this is kind of an uh, enum. Um, so we want to have an int, and we want to have a, an add token, and then we'll write a lexer. So uh, get tokens, which takes a program. Um, Okay, so normally what I would do, I'm gonna warn you, I'm, I'm not gonna write Python code because what I want to do is write something that's easy to port to the language I'm uh, developing. So um, normally I would do something like uh, for line in uh, program split, uh, something like this, but Obviously, the language uh, we're making is not does not have something easy like this. So I think I want to like uh, go through the program a uh, character by character. So it's going to be ugly code. I'm sorry, but it will be easier for us uh, later on. So we want to keep track of the line numbers, uh, and every time we have a new line this will be incremented um okay let's see um i think 
want to skip a white space. Uh, so, uh, while the first character is either a space, a tab, or a new line, uh, program, uh, so we remove the first bit. That's what this does. Um, we have to watch out that there have to be characters left in the program, otherwise uh, program zero will be out of uh, like the index won't exist because it's an empty string. So something like this. Um, normally we want to keep track of the indenting uh, because the language is going to be white space specific, but to do calculate indent, we'll do that later on. Let's uh, keep it simple. So maybe it was an empty line or uh, white space only, and then we want to uh, uh, break. Yeah, OK. Uh, so let's see uh, if a program, if the token is a plus, I think we're going to yield yield a structure, so like a tuple. Um, and in the pr uh, language, it will be a struct kind of thing. Uh, so token type, token type add. Uh, I think we'll just add a value. Um, and yeah, the line numbers, I think that's it. Um, we then want to shift the program like earlier. Okay, so I guess that's it. And then we need one for uh, for integers. Let's see if program if it's uh, I'm gonna write it like this. Uh, maybe. Uh, that if is is int, which takes a, a string or a character, um, well, let's assume it's a string. So the character is in in this. Obviously, normally I would re use re uh, regex regular expressions, but I mean we're not gonna have that, so let's not do that. Uh, for C in S. So this will return true if all characters in S uh, are a digit. So um, yeah, something like that. Um, what the fuck is that? I don't know. All right. So. If the first digit is an integer, I think we want to like, construct a number. And while program zero um, is an integer, we want to like add. Uh, I think you could do it like that. So uh, you want to append the character and shift program and again it could be that the program is empty during this while loop so want to make sure there are characters in program and when that's done we can uh, yield the number so token type uh, in Let's give the number and uh, let's see, uh, line number. Okay, um, right now we also don't increment the line number to increment line number. Okay, okay, so I think if we'll Uh, okay, 
put token in get tokens uh, two three plus let's uh, print each token let's see if this works okay make, make it executable okay something is not really I think I'm not shifting at one point um, Uh, let's see. Let's build an else. Uh, maybe value error for now. Uh, unknown could not tokenize. Yeah, let's call it. Oh no, syntax error. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's line, line number. Uh, uh, let's see. So uh, uh, just print what's left. I hope it will raise. Yeah, okay. Okay, so it's not removing the white space. Um, so why not? Um, I want to do this. Not here anyway. Let's see. So, oh my god, that's so stupid. I'm sorry. So it's actually a bit different to program when like someone's watching. I don't know if you know that feeling, but <laughs> if you're on your own, it's all really easy to do it the correct way. And then uh, someone's watching and you're making really stupid mistakes. But anyway, this is looking good. Like these are the tokens we expect. So um, let's uh, convert it to assembly. Yeah. So um, what I will do, um, I won't uh, convert it to intermediate representation. I will do that later because these tokens can be uh, converted to uh, assembly code right away. Um, so let's think. Um, let's call it compile. Okay, maybe not tokens, so for token in get tokens program, okay, uh, so first of all, assembly, I don't know if you've, you've probably, <laughs> you're not, you know what I'm talking about, but assembly uh, is like always written in columns. So I want to have a, a little helper function, which maybe output, yeah. Which uh, prints it, but um, like in columns. So I think you do it like this. Oh, let's put a space between that. So C10. All right. Okay, cool. So the program has to start by a couple of things be before we compile the tokens. Um, first of all, we want to specify um, the entry point. Global, oh my God. <laughs> Let's just do start. And um, so we'll have a text session, section, like a segment. Um, and we'll define the label. So start. Okay. 
so that will be always on the top and then if we if the token um, oh yeah of course uh, this is a token type uh, value and line number so if token type equals token type int for example so we want to push the integer so um, let's first uh, create a comment about it uh, let's see uh, so I think a line number is easy for debugging and then pushing so that will be the comment and then uh, we want to move uh, the, f uh, the value to R R A X. <laughs> um, value something like that, and then push it. Push the R A X uh, value to the stack. So then that's that. So okay, and now if we token type equals token type dot add um, first comment so I think I'll do this okay um, add so we, we want to like, pop to rx and rbx Although I might want to use RBX for uh, a frame pointer, but maybe I'll change that later. For now, it will be uh, RBX. Um, and then we'll add those two and yeah, put the result in RBX. And then push RBX. So that's that. Um, I think that should be it, but uh, there's also, we want to exit gracefully and we want to exit using the exit code, um, which is on the top of the stack. So if we add, then if we add two and three, then the exit code should be five. So we know uh, everything is correct. So let's uh, create a label. Output. Uh, so for exit, uh, the code is 60. It's a syscall, and the code for exit is 60. And then we want to pop the exit code into RDY and then a syscall. So, yeah, this will be uh, Linux uh, specific. But uh, that's okay. Okay, so instead of this, we had compile to three plus. Let's see. Okay, that looks okay. Um, so let's see. We define the, the, the entry point, which is here. We push two, we push three, we pop into Rx and Rbx, and then add them, push the result, and then the result is is returned. So okay, cool. Uh, let's try to uh, compile it. So uh, oh, first we need to make the assembly file, then compile. Uh, yeah, like this. But uh, what? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. This is the. Uh, okay. So now we have a dot o file. Let's load it. So. Uh, a.0 
All right. And when we execute it, the return code is five. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, so that works. Yeah. So we can push ints and add them together. Um, maybe something that's really easy to do uh, that I want to add is like comments. So I think, um, let's see, I think here, if program zero is like a comment, um, we want to skip until the, um, want to skip each character until the next new line. I'm sorry for talking so slow, but it's <laughs> okay. Um, if it's not a new line, then skip uh, program is program one. So, and then the new line is left, but that will be taken care of by this. Uh, okay. So if we now add uh, a comment, we expect five, this should work. So let's see. Aha. Of course, of course. Um, because there's no new line. So of course it could also end like this. And then just to be, maybe we want to like uh, have a multi-line program. So uh, push ints and then add them together. Okay, so this should be a valid program. Okay, um, let's compile it. And that's five. Okay, perfect. So we've got comments, we can push ints, and we can add uh, ints together. That's cool. So uh, let's see, let's think, uh, what could we do next? Uh, time because I think I'm just gonna add like basic uh, arithmetic uh, right now and maybe some syntax highlighting for FIM and uh, a way to uh, like read files so we can have different uh, programs outside of the so they are not hard coded. I mean, um, I think for next time maybe uh, a hello world is cool. So we have to implement string literals and syscalls. So uh, yeah. Okay, thanks uh, for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. But uh, yeah, see you next time. <laughs>